This meeting is being recorded. Okay. Thank you. All right. So Wing Liang Zhang, uh, continuing his lecture for Monday. Go ahead. All right. So we're going to continue with our theme. So that's a localization problem uh, in tight closure. So I want to introduce this open problem so right away. And my goal is to convince you that so even though touch closure does not commute with localization in general, there are still many interesting open problems along this line. So, um, okay, let me call it open problem number one. Um, I'll try to write less and talk more maybe. Um, Okay, so, so the content of the problem is, so uh, does tight closure commute with localization at one element? Okay, so we know that uh, it doesn't commute to localization in general, but what about I only localize one element? Right? And this is still wide open. And so for the rest of the day, I'm trying to, uh, in the first hour, I'll try to convince you this is still a, in, an interesting open problem. And to that, I probably want to should pay some homage, um, homage to uh, Craig's CBF notes. I mentioned two results from that particular chapter in the book. Okay. So the first, I want to mention one sort of quick remark. So again, let's assume R is not theorem. And in character P and W is a multi plate of closed subset in R. Okay. So if so W is disjoined. from the union of all associated primes of all the forbidden power of this one I do I. So this should be for all E. One. Then the conclusion is, uh, the tight closure of I commutes with localization at W. Okay. Well, so how do we prove this? Well, let's just, only one including requires a proof. So let's say I have an element Z inside the tight closure after the localization, okay? So we may assume Z is in R because a priori this is a fraction with some element from a W in the denominator, but because that's invertible, so it doesn't really affect the membership. So I can assume Z is in R. Now, like we did on Monday, so there exists C not in any mean prime of R such as C times some element from W. So W sub E, this highly depends on E. And Z to the P to the E belongs to the forbidden power of I is for E. Well, like I said, W E depends on E. But now we want to get rid of WE. Um, 
Now, since W E is not in any associated prime of the Frobenius power of I, so C times P to the E is in the Frobenius power of I. And that means Z is actually in the tautic closure of I. Okay. So that means as long as your W, so the, the set you are localizing or inverting has nothing to do with associate primes of all the forbidden power, then uh, tautic closure commutes with localization at this particular set. Now, this actually tells us right away, so this implies or implies if R is, say, weakly F regular, meaning every ideal is totally closed, then so is R localized at the maximum idea. So for any so module, uh, um, okay. All right. So um, so any question on this remark? Now, if not, then, but this remark or the, the implication of problems or questions, though the question is the following. So let me write this as open problem number two. Two. So assume R is weakly F regular. Um, is R local the P also weakly F regular? Of course. Now we probably have seen the definition of F regular ring, so which means uh, it is every localization is still weakly F regular. So. So the content of open problem two is that does weak F regularity imply F regularity, okay? So the remark tells us if I localize any maximum ideal, it is, it's fine, but what about arbitrary prime ideals? Okay. So, so one thing I want to convince you is that uh, a positive answer to open problem one will imply a positive answer to open problem two. So at least as one way to justify uh, problem one or localization as one element is still an interesting problem. Now, I think I should mention that uh, if you have a positive answer to uh, problem one, then you can develop a theory of tactical of sheaves on Nocerian schemes because the topology is generated by the principle of an opens and the principle of an open, they are given by localization of one element. And you can define tactical closure on those principles of opens, you will glue well. And so you can have a new theory uh, for sheaves uh, on Nocerian schemes. Now, so very recently, like one week ago, I think Neil Epstein sent me a preprint, which I haven't had a chance to read it. Uh, I believe in his email, he mentioned that he actually gave some sort of shifty uh, criterion for this uh, open problem one, but I can't really comment on that because I haven't had a chance to uh, read it yet. Okay. All right, so let me mention so one result that's related to open problem two. Okay. 
Now, before that, let me mention one exercise uh, because I'm going to need this uh, in the proof of the result. Okay. Sorry, I, I think there's a question in the chat. Let me. Uh, the question is, can the union of all assorted prime of all the forbidden power be infinite? The answer is yes. I believe uh, the one example was given by multi -cast. Okay, so let me mention the exercise first, and I'll mention the result by multi, uh, by, by multi. So, uh, so uh, so let's say K, so K is an uncountable field, okay? And R is a finitely generated K uh, domain, meaning it's a K algebra and it's a domain. I'm gonna assume the dimension of R is at least one. So the crude dimension is at least one. Uh, so W is a countable multiplicative closed subset of R. Then the conclusion is, if I localize R at W, this cannot be a field. Okay. So that would be the exercise uh, for you. So now let me mention the theorem. I believe in Quirk's book, this was attributed to, to Marty, okay? So let's say K is uncountable. Okay. This is an uncountable field. Uh, so again, the character is a P. So with P. Now R is a finitely generated K algebra. Then assume, so R is weakly F regular. Then the conclusion is uh, any localization of R is still weakly F regular. So this is weakly F regular for any, or sorry, <laughs> maybe let me just, be lazy or efficient for a moment. So let's say then my R is F regular. So again, F regular means uh, every localization is still weakly F regular. So in the localization, every ID is still touch close. Okay, so that means we have a positive answer in this special case. So whenever your K is uncountable and your R is a finite generated K algebra, uh, then weak F regularity implies F regularity. So, all right, so let's prove this. Now, let's assume otherwise. So we're gonna derive a compensation. So assume otherwise. Okay. So, so what does that mean? So that means, so that is, there exists a W and an IDU I such that if I invert W and look at IDU and take a touch closure, this is different from uh, the localization of the touch closure. So 
I'm going to write W inverse than I star. Okay. So we know that there's a one inclusion always because how the color is persistent. So I can always pick, so pick, say, uh, let's say U. In the tight closure after localization, but not in the localization of that closure. Okay. We're looking for a contradiction. So this tells us by exactly the same reasoning we've been doing twice already. So there exists a C not in any prime of R such that. So C times okay, WE in W, where WE highly depends on the, this E again, and U to the P to the E, and this should be in the forbidden power of I. Okay? And this should be true for all E at least one. Like a, I want to emphasize again, so WE highly depends on E. But in this inclusion, only WE is involved. So I don't need any other elements in capital W. So I may replace W by the multiplicative set generated by WEs. There are countably many WEs, so the set generated by them is still countable. So replace. Capital W by, I'm going to write this way, by the one generated by all the WEs. Okay. So, how do you generate it? Well, you take monomials in those WEs. Right? So, that's still count, that's countable because there are only countably many WEs. Okay. So, assume W is actually countable. Uh, you can see why we have this exercise. Uh, we are in a situation where you have a field that's uncountable, and then you have a multiple set that's countable. Okay. All right, so now we're going to pick. A maximal, maximal ideal, uh, let's call it M again, in this localization. Okay. So we know that there's a, there's some correspondence between the prime ideal in the localization and the prime ideal in the original ring, uh, which do not meet with the, the multiplicative set. So that means the M corresponding to a prime ideal in R. So let me write this away. So M corresponding to a prime ideal P in R, okay? So this exercise tells us P must be a maximum ideal in R. So exercise implies P is also maximum in R. Uh, this in R, so we can just write M again, okay? So the idea is that if this is not a maximum ideal, I can look at the R modulo P. Now the localization will be uh, W inverse R modulo M, which is the field. So we are in a situation in the exercise. So if P is not a maximum, R mod P will be a domain with positive dimension over an uncountable field. It's still finally generated. And we have a countable multiplicative set. After we in invert this set, we have a field right? because M is a maximum and that's not possible by the exercise. So a P must be maximum. I'm gonna write P as M again. Okay. Uh, huh. 
All right. So now I'm going to focus on a special um, maximum ideal. Um, so, so choose. Now, what I said here about the maximum P and M, that's true for every uh, maximum ideal uh, in the localization. So now I want to pick a special uh, maximum ideal in the localization. So choose M in the localization. And such is that. U is in here, of course, but not in I, okay? So U is not in I to begin with in any localization. So I must, I, there must be a maximum ideal such that uh, if I localize the maximum ideal, U is still not in I. All right, so what does that mean? This means uh, this localization. So this tells me, so W M, this is not weakly F regular because the ideal I is not tightly closed in this localization. So U is still in the tidal closure because uh, tidal closure persists. Persist. So it's in the tidal closure to begin with, therefore after localization is still in the tidal closure, but it's not in ideal. So uh, it is not tidal closed, therefore the ring is not weakly F regular. But M is a maximum in both rings, in R and in the localization of R. Uh, so this localization is actually the same as R localized at M. But we have seen that if I localize the maximum ideal, it is still weakly F regular. So that's a contradiction. Okay. So that's a contradiction. So that would all right, that will be the proof, okay? All right, so any question on this page? Okay, so like I said, so uh, both questions are wide open in general. Maybe in the next hour, I'll mention more partial result to uh, problem number two. All right, so if you don't have questions, I'm gonna to move to a new page now. Wait. Huh? Uh, just a second. <laughs> Do I have to erase everything now? Wait, I thought I could turn page. Um, you are in Zoom whiteboard or some other yes, whiteboard? Yes, I mean Zoom whiteboard. Hmm. Does somebody have experience with Zoom whiteboard? <laughs> uh, when I did it without, you know, the videos and I could turn page, now I realize I'm not sure. Uh, do I have to erase everything? Okay, I may have to erase something. Um, is it okay if I erase the left side? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, sorry. Okay, um, so now let me sort of go back to the point I'm trying to make. Uh, so, 
Let me write this way. Um, I think it should be clear. Uh, this implies open problem. Uh, I should say one implies two. Okay. Okay. So meaning a positive answer uh, to question one, i.e. if the tidal closure commutes with localization at one element, uh, then a weak F regulatory localizes. Okay. All right, so here is how I prove this. So let's assume the R is weakly F regular. Okay. So we're going to keep localized localizing R at, say, first a prime ideal, maxim ideal, then a prime ideal with dimension one and so on. So, so we can localize R at a maximum ideal. Of course, it's still weak of regular. And then we can repeatedly localize at the prime ideals of now dimension one. Okay. So localize at the maximum ideal, then localize at the prime ideal of dimension one. If we still we can a regular good, then we will go on. So we will local, we we'll look at this localization, then pick a prime of dimension one, which is now dimension two in the original ring. But every time we just localize at the prime ideal dimension one, and then we do this repeatedly until we hit an example which is not a weekly F regular anymore. Okay. So the whole upshot is. So this reduce the problem to proving the following. So if R is weakly of regular local ring, then and so and so p is a prime of dimension one then our local the p is still weakly f regular okay because otherwise we can just keep on going uh do this by dimension Okay, so we know that uh, R is weakly regular even only if all the M primary ideals are tightly closed. So now suffices to show every um, okay, let's just say P. P primary. So P primary ideal I uh, is tightly closed. In our local other P, okay. Okay, so open problem one is about one element. So now we're gonna pick one element. Um, and the whole object is now R model P had dimension one, so uh, we can pick one parameter okay, because dimension is one. One, so we can pick sort of any parameter, so pick any parameter. So it's a domain, so we can pick any 
uh, any non-unit, uh, non non-zero element, it will suffice. Call the f. Okay. It just f is not invertible and f is not in p. That's all. So then, this localization, our local p, this is a localization. of R localized at F at a maximum ideal P, okay. Okay, so that means we suffice this to show So the I is tightly closed in R local at F. Okay. Because we know that tight closure behaves well if you localize at a maximum ID. Okay. But now open problem one tells us so tight clock commutes with localization at one element uh, since i is the same as i start to begin with if we go all the way back to r because r is weakly f regular to begin with and so this is just so, okay, and that finished the proof, okay. So any question on uh, this proposition? Okay, so, Uh, if not, I'm going to introduce more open problems. Uh, there's, in some sense, there are approaches to proving uh, or to solving open problem one or two. Okay. Uh, and to do that, I need to erase the raw hand side of the board. All right, so let me call this open problem five. Okay. So in the literature, this has been referred to the LC problem. Okay. So it says the following. So let's assume we have a no serial local ring. Uh, let's say character get P. And I is primary. In some sense, I'm just trying to extract the essence of the proof of problem four here. Okay. It's primary to a prime ideal P of dimension one. Okay. The question now is, is there a constant Let's call it the capital B. So whenever I say a constant, that means it's independent of E. Such that the maximum ideal 
to the b time t to the e's power kills the zeros local homology of r modulo the Frobenius power of i. And this should be true for all e at least one. Okay. So I think this is in some sense the same phenomenon as we have seen on WE uh, on Monday. So on Monday, we have this uh, sort of instance where we have WE highly depending on E, and then we replace that WE by U to the L plus one, then to the P to E's power. So even though it still depends on the exponent, still depends on E, but uh, is linear with respect to E, and that coefficient L plus one is a constant, so independent of E. And this is the same phenomenon. If we look at, so we fix one E, the zero to a cohomology of R modulo, the Frobenius power I, that has finite length. So certainly a power of maximized U will kill it. So you have exponent that depends on E. And the question is about whether you can find a linear power, linear with respect to P to E, and that can actually kill this module, okay? So it's sort of the same uh, phenomenon as before, but this, as stated, this is open. Of course, in the literature, uh, the problem is stated even more generally, is stated without assumption on, on the height of P or, or whether I is primary or not, okay? It's general. General is just, you have a local ring, you have an ideal, uh, then can you kill the zeros local knowledge of R modulo for being the power by a linear power of the maximum. Okay. But however, uh, for our purposes, this sort of special situation suffice because in the proof of problem four, we've seen that only the height one prime, oh, sorry, dimension one prime ideal matters. And only those that's primary to P actually um, matters. Okay, so um, let me try to convince you why this uh, problem is interesting. So let me call it proposition six. So let me write this away. So open problem number five um, actually implies, let me say open problem um, one, I need some qualifier now, not in the full generality, but in the, in the situation that really, really matters. So, so in, so in the case where I is primary to a dimension one prime, capital P, okay? All right. And in the proof of proposition four, we've seen that that's the only real case that matters here. If we want to solve problem number two, but it doesn't solve problem one in the full generality. Um, okay, so now let's um, prove this. But any questions on problem five or proposition four? All right, if not, let's uh, prove this. Now, suppose. I have a Z uh, in the tight closure after I localize at one element, okay? So, and F is a parameter in R model. P meaning F is not in P and F is not invertible, okay? So what do we want? We want to show that Z is in a localization of tight closure. I may assume Z is an R by the same reasoning as before. And we may pick, so let's say we'll pick 
C is not in any minimal problem R such that C times Z to the P to the E is contained in the forbidden power, but after the localization, okay? Virtual, I'm just repeating the definition of uh, touch closure. So what does it mean? So mean this implies or equivalent to, so C time F to the, I'm gonna say N sub E. So this is the same phenomenon as the W E again. And just, we can now focus on one element, but the phonon N E highly depends on E. All right, so since, let me rewrite this. So F to the NE times C, Z to the P to the E is in I bracket E. This tells me C times Z to the P to the E actually belongs to the zeroth local homology of R mod, the forbidden power, because F is a parameter. So if we look at the ring R modulo, the forbidden power of I, F is still parameter. So the radical of F is actually the entire maximality. So killing by the parameter is the same as killing by power of the maximality. So now we know this element C times Z to the P to the E belong to the zero local homology. Okay. So now, uh, so, so open problem five tells us uh, there is a linear power. Okay? This actually implies exists B independent of E, so F to the B times P to the E times C times E uh, is zero. But zero meaning it belongs to I to the P to the E. Okay? But that implies if I rearrange this product of C times F, B times Z to the P to the E, that will be in E, okay? So that means, so F to the B times Z now belong to the touch closure of I. And this means Z is in the localization of touch closure, okay? So, and that's it. So that, uh, we'll finish the proof. Okay. All right. So, any question on proposition six? Again, like me, maybe back to my sort of takeaway. The takeaway is even though a touch polar are not multiple localization in general, and there are still many interesting problems. All right, so I have about six, seven minutes. So let me mention uh, some partial result uh, regarding problem number five. Okay. Uh, in order to do that, I need to erase the left hand side of the board. Uh, Okay, so let me mention one sort of a um, partial result and uh, that is in graded case. So the bottom line in the graded case, if instead of assuming R is local, we are assuming R is an ungraded uh, null theorem ring where the degree zero piece is a field of positive characteristic. And then the answer is yes. So you do, you, we can find the linear power of M to kill this. Okay. So let me state the theorem. Then I'll say a few words about this. So let me, uh, this will be theorem seven. So if R
So this is the ungraded kernel theorem. And so the degree zero piece is a field, is a field. Uh, so a positive characteristic, okay? So we're gonna set this to be a positive degree piece. And I'm gonna state this in under some assumptions because this originally proved under the assumptions, then I'll tell you how to remove the assumptions. Dimensional and so dimension of R mod I is one. Okay. And of course, I is still homogeneous. Then there exists a constant B uh, such that so M to the B. E R modulo. This is indeed zero. Okay. So in the literature, there are at least three different proofs to this result. Okay. I believe this was to say uh, I should attribute this to Huniki and Dvorasio. Oh, sorry. They prove it independently uh, using different methods. Then much later, I gave a different proof uh, uh, without the assumption that R is actually like a dimension uh, back in 2015, but they proved it in around 2000, okay? All right, but otherwise this uh, problem number five is uh, wide open in general, okay? Now I have three minutes, so let me mention one uh, approach to this, okay. so which has something to do with primary decomposition. All right, so let's say I consider the primary decomposition. Then N sub B, so this is the primary decomposition. All right, so every Q here depends on E and the number of Qs we need also depends on E, okay? Now, so here is a question, I believe this was raised by Irena and Karen. Okay, so let me attribute to, uh, Irena can correct me if I'm wrong. Of course, I haven't stated the question yet. So does, there exists uh, a constant C such that for every such Q, so Q, I'm going to say E, I, then I take this to the constant C time E to power is actually contained back in I. Now here is an exercise for you, and you can see why this question uh, matters. So say Q uh, depends on E, sorry. Uh, let me say Q sub E. So Q sub E is uh, the M primary component. of the forbidden power of I, okay? So I look at the say a minimal prime decomposition, so meaning we got rid of all the redundancy, then look at M primary component, and then, so this QE will kill the zeros law homology, okay? Is zero. So if you have a positive answer to the question, raised by Swanson and Smith, uh, then you can see, well, okay, so that content C will be your content B. Uh, so the linear power of maximum ideal will actually kill uh, the zero slow homology. Okay, so I think my time is up, um, I'll stop here.
Thank you. Are there any questions? Comments? Oh, okay. okay. I think uh, Sudarshana just tell me how to create a new page. Okay. I'll, I'll try that in next hour, so you don't have to watch me erasing anything. Thank you so much for a nice talk. And right. a question for everybody: We're supposed.